Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see how many of you are joining us today for a uh, free lesson with uh, Graham Tufnell. And um, it's so nice seeing how many, uh, we see folks joining from England, Canada, Alaska, uh, North Yorkshire, New Zealand. I see a lot of names I recognize. Good to see you guys. I see some uh, new names as well. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Bajir. I made LearnBridge Online as a place where us bridge learners can learn from some of the best bridge teachers around the world, including those we might not otherwise have access to. And um, it really is, uh, it's just wonderful having Graham teach a weekly class every Thursday uh, here at LBO. And um, I'm also really happy to look for the chance to put on free live events like today's. Uh, so a very heartfelt thank you to Graham for agreeing to do this um, and to all of you for joining us. Uh, audio is repeating, Joanna. I wonder if that might mean that you have two tabs open. Can you just make sure that you only have one tab open? As long as there's only one tab open, you should just hear me once. Knock on wood. Um, Unless maybe your coffee was a little too strong. Sometimes I think I have that feeling. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, I think most of you already are familiar with Graham. Uh, for those of you who aren't, you're in for a real treat. Um, I know I'm not alone in appreciating the way that Graham pushes us not only to know um, uh, the, the, the guidelines that we're familiar with in terms of you know, bidding and card play, but uh, how he pushes us to think about why, what they are, why they're there, and um, to understand them better. What clues might we be missing if we don't take a little extra moment to think about them? And uh, so I'm looking forward to take this lesson along with all of you. Uh, enough talk. I hope you will join me in a big virtual welcome to our teacher, Graham Tufnell, come on down. Hey, hey. Hey, Graham. Hi, Bajir. Hi, everybody. It's a nice crowd, Graham. I'm excited to uh, take this class along with everyone. Me too. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be fun. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in from, wow, all over. That's really great. So, Graham, just uh, say my name. I'll be here uh, switching between the screens, et cetera, but I can turn on my camera again. If I can be of any technical help, just let me know. Yep. Okay, everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, good, good everything. We're going to talk today about stamen, and I'm guessing that most of you have some idea about what stamen is. Or you, you probably play it. Um, if you don't, I'll just go through and talk briefly about it. Stamen is almost certainly the most popular bridge convention in the world. It's the convention that just about everybody learns first. Uh, almost everybody plays stamen. Let's take a look at some hands and we'll talk through and I've got a few little surprises for you about this fantastic stamen convention. Let's go. Don't be shy about uh, commenting, asking questions. This is just a fun class. There's no tests or anything. Just chat away and, and let's have a bit of fun with this. We'll look at stamen from a little bit of a different angle. First of all, I've got a hand for you. Now, it doesn't matter if you are playing Akol or standard. My, my computer's set up to play Akol, which is a 12 to 14 one no trump opening bid. If you're playing standard with a 15 to 17 or some other um, bidding system, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll talk, if, if it does matter, I'll talk about when the time comes. But here we go. And have I got a hand for you? Here we go. Partners open, one no trump. 12 to 14 points. And you have got this marvelous hand. So, First thought, what are we going to do with our zero points? There's probably not a, it's hard to find a worse hand than that. So go ahead and just 
chat through, you know, chat, 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 tell me what you're thinking, and we can go from there. So what are you going to do with that hand when partner opens one no trump, 12 to 14? Even if you're playing standard, what are you going to do if partner opens one no trump and um, you've got that hand, that terrible hand? So some of you are saying uh, transfers or Jacoby or uh, bid two hearts. It seems like most of you are playing transfers, but I'm sure some of you are not playing transfers. Uh, if you're not playing transfers, you might bid two spades or you might pass. Here's, a, here's Barbara and Gary saying pass, and a few of you are play, playing transfers. Great. Okay. Lots of different answers. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. So now I've got a question for you. Think about this, forget about what the right bid is. This is something that I often talk about in my classes. I think it's a really helpful way to think about bridge. Sometimes we think about what the right bid is. We're always looking to write, make the right bid and get to the right contract by making the right bid. If you're allowed to do anything, forget about what your bids show, what is the best contract on this hand? What's the best contract? Is one no trump going to be the best contract or is two spades going to be the best contract? Now to answer that, think about how many tricks you would get. Just imagine that no trumps, just imagine you're in a contract of one no trump. How many tricks is this hand going to be worth if you are playing in a contract of one no trump. Okay, just shows you one no trump, pass, 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 and you put the dummy down. How many tricks is this hand actually going to be worth, the south hand, in one no trump? You, don't worry about how many tricks you tr you're trying to make, but how many tricks, and all the zeros are coming through, right? This hand is worth absolutely zero tricks if you are playing in one no trump. Because even if partner's got spades, look at that spade suit. There's no way to get over to the south hand. Okay? So zero tricks if spades, if, if you're in a contract of one no trump. How many tricks will you, how many tricks do you think the south hand is worth if spades are trumps? How many tricks do you think you might get in the south hand if spades were trumps? Forget about the right bid. Just think how many tricks you might make if spades were trumps in the south hand. Well, it's, you know, it's not a great hand, but it's going to be something, isn't it? You're going to get two or three tricks. Great. Okay, so you're all saying you're going to get a few tricks in spades, and you're going to get zero tricks if you if the south hand from the south hand in a contract of one no trump. Good. So either way, you're probably not going to make one no trump, right? And you're probably not going to make two spades. You're almost certainly going to go down in both contracts. But would you rather be in a contract of one no trump going lots and lots and lots down? Or would you rather be in a contract of two spades going a little bit down? Now, and I think when, when we look at it like that, it seems that two spades is a better contract than one no trump. Now, you might be saying, but I, I can't bid two spades. I can't. How can I bid two spades when I've got zero points? I'm, if I bid, I'm, I'm supposed to be showing points to my partner and communicating. Well, in this case, no. When your partner has opened one no trump, if your partner has opened one no trump and you bid a suit at the two level, that is simply telling your partner that you'd rather play in your suit at the two level than one no trump. You're not showing any extra points. You're just saying, 
I think two spades is a better contract than one no trump, and you are allowed to bid it with zero points. So now, so just to be sure, if you're not playing transfers, you would just bid one no trump, two spades, and that would be the finish of it. That's better contract than one no trump. If you are playing transfers, then you're still going to get to play in two spades. You would just bid two hearts, and then partner would bid two spades, and then you would pass. Okay. So that um, way of escaping out of one no trump is called a weakness takeout. So a weakness takeout doesn't show any points. It just says, I don't want to play in one no trump. Weakness takeout. Okay, it's, you'll have to have at least a five card spade suit to do that because if you only had a four card spade suit, clearly you'd be better off in one no trump. So that's what one no trump two spades shows or a transfer. Now I'm going to show you another hand. Uh, if I can find it here, one second. I know it seems a bit odd when you're bidding with zero points, but you know, try and forget about the best bid, and we're always looking for the best contract, not the best bid. That solves a lot of bidding problems. Okay, here we go. Again, partner has op opened one no trump. Now, for those of you who are playing uh, standard, which shows uh, a 15 to 17 no trump, just imagine you're playing a weak no trump. So just imagine that partner's showing 12 to 14 points. Otherwise, you know, strong no trump and weak no trump, there's really not much difference to them. So just, just imagine the partner's showing 12 to 14. So Elizabeth is saying, what if um, I had five spades and some points? Good question, Elizabeth. Um, and if you've got enough, if you if you've got enough points to bid game, then you need to bid three spades or do something more. If you've got fewer if you don't have enough points for game, but you've got five or more spades, then yes, you can you can make a weakness takeout. All you're saying is that you'd rather play in two spades than one no trump, and your and your partner will stop. That's the idea of a weakness takeout. You're simply saying, let's stop in two spades. And Catherine's saying, if you play transfers, how will your partner know it is a weak takeout? So if if partner bids one no trump and I bid two hearts as a transfer and then partner bids two spades, I'm going to pass on the next time round. And so partner will know it's a weakness takeout because, you know, we're going to leave him in two spades. So, you know, people think that this really, <laughs> what am I trying to say here? It doesn't matter if you're playing transfers or not. You just, some hands you just want to play in two spades. You can either get there by bidding two spades or you can get there by transferring and getting partner to bid two spades and then you'll pass on the next time round. Right, so this time partner's open one no trump and we have, what's that, 13 high card points. So this hand's pretty good this time. This time we want to play in game. Okay. We want to play in game this time. So we could just bid three no trumps. Partner's got 12 to 14. We've got whatever it is. Let's count them up again. What's that? 13. So 12 to 14 in partner's hand, 13 in our hand. That's 25 points, two balanced hands. There'd be nothing at all wrong with just going one no trump, three no trumps. Fine. But there is a chance that partner has got a four-card spade suit. Partner's allowed to have a four-card spade suit for that one no trump opening. So if partner has got a four-card spade suit, four spades might be a better contract than three no trumps. So how are we going to find out if partner's got this four-card spade suit? Maybe we should bid two spades to show that spade suit. What do you think about that? Is there any reason why can't we just bid two spades here to tell partner we've got spades and keep exploring and, 
and and see if we can get to gain that way. Would that be a good idea? Certainly show a spade suit. And Simon, Joanna, that would you're quite right. We cannot bid two spades because as we just talked about, one of Trump two spades would be a weakness takeout. And also, if you bid one of Trump, if you're playing transfers, two hearts, two spades, that would also be a weakness takeout. And they both show five card suits. So we can't bid spades. So we are stuck. If partner opens one no trump and we've got a four card spade suit, there is no way to show that four card spade suit. So along came our friend, Mr. Sa Mr. Stamen, Sam Stamen. And Sammy came up with this idea that said, if partner opens one no trump, let's bid two clubs to ask if partner has a four card major. And the responses to this are very easy. So I'm going to bid two clubs now. And if partner has a four card spade suit, he'll bid two spades. If partner has a four card heart suit, he'll bid two hearts. And if partner doesn't have a four card major, he will bid two diamonds. And that two diamonds simply says I, that he does not have a four card major. So let's give that a shot. Let's bid two clubs here. Now, partner can't pass this. That's saying, please tell me, do you have a four card major? Partner bids two spades. And that's great. We found our spade fit. So now I can bid four spades. How many of you are familiar with that? And how many of you is that's just completely a new idea to you? Or and how many how many of you are sort of toying with the idea of stamen? This is all new, or have you heard this before, or you're all very familiar with this? Familiar, familiar, familiar? Great. Good. Good, good, good. Familiar. Familiar? Familiar. Okay. Let me give you another hand. And yeah, most of you are familiar. It's, it is the world's most popular bridge convention. So it's likely that you've heard about it before. I'm going to give you another one that's a little bit more um, involved. Not too much, though. But let's just go through to make sure we're on the right back here. One sec. All right. Let's try this one. So if, if you're not familiar with stamen, it's not too complicated. It's it's really all it is is two clubs is do you have a four card major? Two diamonds says no, two hearts says I have a four card heart suit, two spades I have a four card spade suit. And that's it. That's the whole stamen convention. What happens after the stamen convention? Right, so after stamen, how does the bidding proceed? How, how does the subsequent auction go? Let's have a look at this now. So this time I'm going to, we're going to switch around, and this time I'm going to play a one no trump opening from the south hand. Now, again, if you are playing standard, so if you're used to playing one no trump as 15 to 17, it's Fine, um, we're just playing Akol today, so my one no trump is 12 to 14. So just adjust your point count by a little bit and you'll be fine. So this is very important, what, I'm, what, I'm, what we're talking about here. After stamen and the response, bidding reverts just to natural bidding, just in the same way as it 
in the same way you would bid had you not gone through Stamen. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to open, what have I got there? 14 high card points. So one no trump, two clubs. So that two clubs is saying that's Stamen. Do you have a four card major? And yes, we do. So I'm going to simply bid two hearts and partner bid two no trumps. So remember, we're just reverting now to our natural bidding. Tell me everything you can about the north hand this time. So go ahead and type it or um, think it in your head if, you're, if you don't feel like typing, but we're, we're amongst friends here, so don't be shy. If you've got a pen and paper, you can just jot down this, what you think North might have. All right, good, good, good. All right, so you're all saying that North has spades only, not four hearts, four spades, partner has four spades. Great, great, great. How many points does North have for that tuna trump bit? How many points does North have for that tuna trump bit? And I'm getting lots of different answers here. And okay. I'm getting a few different answers here, so good. We're on now we're getting into the nitty-gritty of it. Right. Now again, if you're playing standard, just you need to adjust your bidding just a little bit. So imagine the bidding had gone that I had opened one no trump with 12 to 14. And just imagine partner had bid two no trumps directly. So one no trump, two no trumps. My one no trump is 12 to 14. And partner has bid two no trumps, which is inviting me to go to game. So if partner is inviting me to go to game, how many points will he need to make that two no trump bid? Remember, I've shown 12 to 14. So if I've shown 12 to 14, and remember we need 25 points to bid game, how many partner will how many points would partner need? to bid to no trumps. And still some, we're honing in on it here, we're honing in. Let me ask you this question. If I bid one no trump with 12 to 14 points and partner's got six points, is there any chance that we're going to make game? Okay, if I've got 12 to 14 and partner's got six, is there any chance that we're going to make game? There's not, right? If I've got 12 to 14 points and partner's got 10, okay? If I've got 12 to 14 and partner's got 10, I mean, we need 25 to go to game. Is 10 going to be enough to bid game? No, it's, it's not. The math just doesn't add up. 12 to 14, and 10 in partner's hand is 24 at the most. So 10 is not enough to bid two no trumps. 11 is just enough to bid two no trumps, because if I've got 14 and partner's got 11, we've got 25. So this is a bit of a trap. This is something that catches quite a few players, because you're used to maybe one heart two no trumps or... Um, you know, one diamond, two no trumps showing 10 to 12. But after a one no trump opening, because your point count is so narrow, uh, 12 to 14, then um, your the invitational bids from partner are, are very accurate. So partner's got to have at least 11 to bid two no trumps here. Now, on this hand, here's a bit of a trick. On this hand, how many points does partner have? 
Now we know it's got to be 11, it's got to be at least 11. How many points does Vartner have on this hand? Bonus, double bonus points if you can get this one right. Two no trumps is normally 11 or 12, right? Because if partner had 13, he would just bid three no trumps straight away. So how many points is that two no trump bid from north? And there's a bit of a clue here. There's a clue. Julie's, Julie uh, is getting it. A few of you getting it here. Partner burst past. Right. So that pass tells us that partner's got 11 points at the most. And the two no trump bid tells us partner's got 11 points at least. So in this case, partner has got 11 points exactly. Partner must have exactly 11 points to bid like that. It's pretty cool, right? Why didn't partner just bid one no trump, two no trumps? Well, partner's looking for a four card spade suit, for, for a four card major, and it's not hearts, so therefore partner must have a four card spade suit. Okay, partner's looking for a, that two clubs tells us, as partner is saying, that he's got at least one four card major, not a five card major, because if he had a five card major, he would have bid spades or tr transferred himself. But in this case, two clubs is looking for a four four fit. So North has a four card major. That's not hearts, because I bid two hearts, we bid two hearts here, and partner rejected my heart suit. <laughs> Typical. Partner's now with two no trumps, so partner must have 11 points exactly, which is what we worked out, and a four card spade suit. So I've got 14 points, partner's got 11, we've got 25 points, and we have a four four spade fit, so now I can bid four spades. Now that looks kind of weird. The first time I saw this happen, First time I learned about this, I thought this was really weird because all of a sudden I bid four spades out of the blue. But that auction, that's exactly what North has shown, 11 points in a four-card spade suit. And here we are in the very good contract of four spades. Why four spades and not three no trumps? The thing here is that four spades... A 4-4 fit will often, not always, but a 4-4 spade fit will often be better than three no trumps. And that is the Stamen Convention. And it's really, it's really great. It's really easy to use once you get the hang of it. And it, um, you know, you can find all these great major fits rather than playing three no trumps. Okay, if this is new to you, um, we'll take it slowly. We'll, we'll, I'll be spending some more time talking about uh, stamen and transfers later on. I've got another question for you. How often, how much bridge do you play every week? There's a go. There's a curveball for you. How many hands of bridge do you play every week? And let's say you might be playing a couple of times, a um, couple of times a week, or maybe you're playing, yeah. Julie's saying what would partner would do if he had nine or ten points? He could not use stamen, and he could not bid two no trumps. Ah, Sarah's too many times, Sarah. There's never too much. Joanna, not as much as she would like. Just play more. Sarah, a couple of times a week, twice a week at the Bridge Club. Yeah, that's kind of normal, isn't it? I think most people will probably pay a couple of times a week. Maybe if you're going down to the club, you might play, what, 25 hands a night or afternoon, twice a week. So say 50 hands a week, 
maybe? Let's go for 50. Most of you are probably playing about 50. I know, I know most of the bridge clubs are shut right now, so unfortunately. But let's say we'll we'll go for 50. Let's say you imagine you're playing 50 hands a week. And imagine you are playing, uh, you know, you're allowed a couple of weeks off. So let's say you're playing 50 hands a week, 50 times a year. That would be 2,500 hands every year. That's a lot of bridge, isn't it? Two and a half thousand hands of bridge every year. Can you see my little drawing there? Yeah, two and a half thousand. Okay. Of those two and a half thousand hands that you play every year, uh, how many is your partnership, is your side, going to be opening the bidding? And it's kind of, yeah, it's about half, isn't it? You know, if you're if two and a half thousand hands a year, half of them the opposition are going to open, half of them you, you're going to open. So let's say you're, you and your partner are uh, opening the bidding on about 1,250 hands every year. That's a lot of opening bids. Okay, I've got another question for you. Of those 1,250 hands every year that you, you and your partner are opening, you're going to sometimes open a club or a diamond. You're going to open a heart or a spade. You might open with a preempt or a weak two or a strong two or two clubs. You know, all sorts of different opening bids. You might open one no trump on some hands. Um, gosh, there's so many different bids. What percentage of the time do you think that you would be opening one no trump? I have an, I have a, an approximate idea, but have a think through it yourself. Of all the different opening bids, about how often would you be opening one no trump? Remember, you could open, gosh, how, I mean, how often would you open a heart, a spade, a diamond, a club? There's so many different opening bids. Maybe a club's the most common opening bid. I'm not sure. All right, so the numbers you're coming through with are 50%, 25%, 20%, 10%, 5%, 20%, 25%, 5%, 5%. Let's go for, I, I don't know what the answer is, about 10% of hands are balanced and 10% are, you know, in that 12 to 14 range. It's... It's probably not 20%. It's probably fewer than 20%. But, you know, one no trumps a common opening bid, but it's certainly not 25%. You're not opening one no trump on a quarter of the hands. Let's go for around about, you know, 20% or so. So that what, what's 20% of that? Let's call it, um, I don't know, it's probably a little less than 20%. So let's go for about 220 hands a year where you are opening the bidding one no trump. Seem reasonable? When you open one no trump, when you open one no trump, there are many different responses to one no trump. You could, you, I mean, you're often going to pass and play in one no trump. You're, you're often going to bid two no trumps as an invitational bid. You're often going to bid three no trumps straight away, or you might bid four clubs Gerber or six no trumps, or you might bid, if you're playing transfers, you might make a transfer bid, or you might make a weakness takeout. You might bid a new suit at the three level. So many different ways that you could respond to one no trump. When your partner opens one no trump, what percentage of the time do you think that you would be replying with stamen? If your partner opens one no trump, what percentage of the time would you be bidding stamen as opposed to pass or two no trumps or three no trumps or a transfer? 
how often will stamen come up? Getting 5% here, 3%, 5%. Ah, Simon H. Well done, Simon. Look at that. What? Thank you, Simon. Simon has uh, whipped over to Wikipedia and said that the opening one of Trump occurs on about 20% of biddable hands. Great. Good. Thank, thanks, Simon. Excellent. So we were about right with 220 out of um, 1250. Good. And when I'm asking the Num the percentage of the time that your partner would use stamen, then um, Sue Rose is saying 5%, Julie Ellett, 3%, Margot, 5%, Pablo loves stamen, he's up with 30%. No idea. It's probably, I don't know, there's so many different things you might do. Um, Sue Rose has said 5, we've got 3, 5, 30, I don't know. Let's go for... Let's go for about 10%. I don't, I don't think it is 10%. It's probably less than 10%. But let's go for 10 or so percent. So that would be about 20 hands where your partner would use stamen. We're down to 20 hands a year when your partner would use stamen. After a two-club opening, uh, sorry, after one of Trump two clubs, stamen, the reality is you don't always find a, a fit. On the hand I've just shown you, you found a spade fit. So you won't always find a major fit after a two club response. How often, you know, how often do you think you would find a fit? When you've been too, if it's me, I, I don't know about you guys, but every time I use stamen, my partner's never got a full card major. Um, but, you know, sometimes it happens. How often do you think you would find a fit after you've used the stamen convention? I don't know what the answer is. Oh, Julie Elliott is saying 1%. Okay. You know, let's go, let's be, I don't know, we, let's not be optimistic or pessimistic. Let's just say about half the time, having used stamen, we managed to find they fit. So we're down to 10 hands a year where we've actually used stamen and found a fit. Of course, we said that uh, stamen is really good because you know, it helps you find this fit. But of course, there are some hands when even if you do have a spade fit or a heart fit, three no trumps is still going to be the best contract. So of those 10 times, maybe two or three times, you would have been better off on three no trumps anyway. Oh, no. What's happening here? We're down to just half a dozen hands in a year where stamen is actually going to do you any good. Heck. Really, this is the world's most popular bridge convention, and if you're playing twice a week, you can expect to get a, a useful stamen bid sequence once every two months. All right, so maybe it is okay. Let's, that's the, the plus side of using stamen, is that you are going to get to a better contract maybe seven times a year. <laughs> what are the downsides of playing stamen? Can, any think of a reason, can anyone think of a reason why you should not be playing stamen? And there's the obvious one that two clubs, um, sometimes you might actually want to play in two clubs. Not very often, but it does mean that you can no longer bid two clubs. So that's not such a good thing. What I think is more, Sarah, down, Sarah saying your opponents know what you're holding. Quite right. Uh, Joanna, yes, you're, that, those are, I love those comments there. The more accurate our bidding is, 
the more we describe our hand, the more information we're getting giving to our opponents. That's, that's quite right. For me, the, one of the most dangerous things about using any convention is that if you use a convention, mistakes are going to happen. Especially when a convention is only coming up a few times a year, you are going to make mistakes because it's going to be unfamiliar to you. Now, let me say this, that, well, let me say a couple of things. First, if you decided that you did not want to play Stamen, I think um, I've shown you here that despite what I think every bridge teacher and player in the world will tell you, you've got to play Stamen, you've got to play Stamen. No, you don't. You don't have to play Stamen. If you do play Stamen, that's great. It will help you on some hands. But you've got to be really careful that you understand the subsequent bidding. Now, one thing you can do with your partner is uh, just do this. But sit down with your partner and go through the different auctions and say, okay, if the bidding goes one no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, two, oops, two hearts, what does that mean? What does two spades mean? What does two no trumps mean? Just go through, sit down together, and look at all the subsequent auctions and make sure that you and your partner are in agreement with each other. Doing that with pen and paper, sit down, cup of coffee, sit at the cafe or whatever, doing that will give you far more benefit. Understanding your system better will give you far more benefit than the actual computer will. Uh, can't with the computer. What I'm what I'm going to be doing for the next few Thursdays is just going through all the statement options and the transfer options and just showing you how the subsequent auction works, showing you just so you have more confidence in your no trump bidding and your no trump play. I've got one more hand for you, and if I can find it, one second. Same in two no trumps. Same in followed by two no trumps. And this is something that I think is really uh, a great way to practice. Bear with me for one second. You'll, uh, where are we? Here we go. Now, check this out. This is the sort of thing that I like to do on my um, Thursday classes. If you've got your pen and paper with you, if you're one of my regulars with your pen and paper, you can do this with me. If you don't have a pen and paper and you're uh, new to my classes, quickly grab a pen and paper. Otherwise, just watch what I'm doing here. On the right side of my screen, I've got a sort of bit of pen and paper, so I'm gonna draw up here. So here we go. It's gone 14 high card points, and we're going to open one no trump. Two clubs from partner. What is that two clubs bid? Well, that's Stamen. So what should I respond here? That two clubs, remember, is, doesn't say anything about clubs. It's telling me that partner's asking me, do you have a four card major? Yes, I do. I'm gonna bid two hearts. Partner bids two no trumps. What does that two no trump bid tell us? We've seen a similar hand like to this earlier today. Remember, I'm playing 12 to 14, one no trump. So what does that two no trump bid tell us? 11 high card points exactly. Because if partner had 10, then he, would have, he wouldn't have bid two no trumps. 
Patton has also got a four card spade suit. Great. Otherwise, if Patton didn't have a four card spade suit, he would have just bid two of trumps or something else. And Patton does not have a four card heart suit. All right, great. So if Patton's got 11 points exactly, Simon's saying three hearts, four spades, and 11 points. Great. Patton might have two hearts. Um, Patton's not promising a, a three card heart suit, but he will certainly have four spades and 11 points. Spot on, perfect. So if Pana's got 11 points, and Marla's saying, should you go three no trumps with such weak diamonds? You definitely should, Marla, because you've got 25 points between the two hands. This is something else I, I talk about a lot in my classes. You can't panic about stoppers. If you've got 25 points between the two hands, and you've got two balanced hands, much better just to just to bid three no trumps. And if you can, especially if you can learn to play your no trump hands with confidence, then you'll be fine. You're going to make three no trumps often enough to that it's worthwhile, even if there are a few disasters. Okay, here we go. You're going to finish up with a bit of, uh, you're going to have to stretch your brains for this a little bit, but uh, this is our regular practice that we do on Thursdays. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down, and you can be doing this with pen and paper as well yourself. First I'm going to write down North's shape as far as the suits go. So North's got four spades, two hearts, three diamonds, and four clubs. And we're here sitting south, and we've got three spades. This is just the sort of thing you want to be doing. If you want to get better at bridge, if you want to really improve your bridge, there's honestly, there's no better practice than this. Okay, all I've done is I've written down our shapes. West has led the six of diamonds. What do we know about West's diamond? What's going on there? What's that lead all about? What do we know? Why did West lead a diamond? And why the six? What are you doing there, West? What's West doing? Well, it's a low diamond. Um, so best suit, yep, fourth highest with an honour, all great. Good, good, good. So West has probably led his fourth highest. So it's probably, and, and West is leading a low card from an honour. So I would expect West to have either the Ace of Diamonds or the Jack of Diamonds and uh, at least a four-card diamond suit. Now, this is the thing. Again, this is really, really important practice. This is really what I recommend you be doing all the time. When you're trying to remember the cards, when you're trying to work out who's got what, the hardest thing you can do, the, the way people make it really hard on themselves is by trying to remember every card. But we don't need to do that. All we need to do is look to see which cards are missing. Right, Thornton Bridge saying the four and five are missing. Right. If we can figure out where the four and five are, then we're going to work, be able to know everything. Now I'm going to play the queen here, and you'll, I'll, I'll um, show you what I mean. So West has led the six. I'm going to play the queen. And East has played the five. Now there's no guarantees. But now, what do you think the most likely distribution of the diamond suit is? What's probably happening in the diamond suit? So who's got the, why did West play the five of diamonds and not the four? Now, if West had the five and four, he probably would have played the, the four. So. It looks like West has got the four of diamonds. And we know that West has started with a, uh, we thought that six was West's fourth highest diamond, 
So if West has also got the four, then West must have started with exactly five card diamond suit, and East must have started with exactly a three card diamond suit. Now go ahead and write that down on the paper until you get practiced at it, and then you can start doing this in your head. So I'm going to follow suit there. Now I'm going to play some spades. And everyone's following suit there. Oh, Ace of Hearts, that's nice. Not, I'm not doing, don't have to do any counting now because all, all I'm doing is following suit. And no surprises there, we thought that would happen. And I'll throw a heart. Good. And as suspected, East showed up with that third round of diamonds. Now I'm going to play a spade. So that's a... Uh, I'm going to play the Jack of Spades. Oh, hello. East has thrown a heart. So, how many spades did how many spades did East start with? How many spades did East start with? Well, this is the third round of spades we played. We've actually played, we already played two rounds of spades. Now, I see some of you are saying singleton, one, one, and some of you are saying two. This is why it's such, this is such an important thing to practice. We've played two rounds of spades already, and then East threw away a spade on the third round. So that tells us that East started with two spades. And there were four in the north hand, three in the south hand, two in the east hand, and therefore West started with a four card spade suit. Oops. Okay. Great. Now this hand's actually pretty easy now. We've got the rest of the tricks. But again, for practice, if you really want to get good at your bridge, this is how you start to build up a picture of the missing hands. I'm going to play some clubs now. Uh, I'm just going to play um, King of Clubs, and I'll play uh, Club to the Ace. Ah, okay, so unless West is being clever clogs here, it looks like how many clubs did West start with? How many clubs did West start with? We played two rounds of clubs already. Yeah, it looks like West is only looks like West started with a two-card club suit. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to play another club now. Right, and West has thrown a diamond. So West started with two clubs. If West started with two clubs, how many clubs did East start with? Well, four on the north hand, four on the south hand, two in the west hand. Therefore, east must have started with three clubs. So how many hearts did east start with? How many hearts did east start with? Remember, this is east's hand over here on the right. How many hearts did east start with? Got to be five, right? Got to be five. Two spades, three diamonds, and three clubs must have been a five card heart suit. If we started with four spades and five diamonds and two clubs, how many hearts did West start with? It's got to be two. So here we are, we're, we're just over halfway through the hand, and we've been able to work out the shapes of all four hands. Let's just finish off here. 
and it's just slightly hidden there, sorry, you can't quite see the diamond suit, but we can see indeed that West started with four spades, two hearts, five diamonds and two clubs, and East started with two spades, five hearts, three diamonds and three clubs. Now, I promise you that if you do this with your pen and paper and go through this, it'll be slow to start off with, but as you do this with pen and paper, you will get better at it and eventually you'll be able to do it in your head. I genuinely believe that the best way to improve your bridge is to play simple bridge, learn the stamen fitting, learn the subsequent options, play sound, steady fitting, and use uh, all the clues that you've got to build up a picture of the missing cards. That will be how you play bridge well and with confidence, and that's the sort of thing we do on Thursday nights. So um, please uh, come along and join us if you'd like to. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. We covered a lot of ground, and if you're new to this uh, counting thing, I know it'll be a bit of a shock, <laughs> but it's a really great way to, honestly, it's a great way to improve, and it's not so hard once you get a bit of practice at it. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, a lot of fun, and thanks all for your comments too. It makes it so much more fun when everyone's joining in like that. Thank you. What a, what a nice group. Uh, such fantastic comments. Graham, I have uh, my notepad right here. That was, that was great. I Good. am looking forward to uh, watching the replay myself. Uh, uh, you guys already know where you can find this. As soon as this live stream ends um, at the same URL, you should be able to watch it. But as long as you're on one of our uh, newsletter mailing lists, I will also be sure to send out a link to the replay. And I uh, just want to echo a, uh, a special invite to you all. If you're um, interested in joining Graham's regular online classes Thursday nights, um, I guess it depends where you are, but Thursdays, they're online, they're interactive. Uh, this gives a real taste of what they're like. And so we would really love to see you there. Just go to learnbridgeonline.com and you'll see where you can sign up for his classes. Thank you, Graham. Really appreciate you making this free and we can open it up for everyone. So thank you, that was, that was wonderful. My pleasure, that was great fun. Thanks everybody. And um, thanks for joining in from all over the world, different times, 2 a.m., Joanna. Thank you, everyone. That's great. Bye, everybody. Take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye.